Hello. Would you like to join me for breakfast? I've got my breakfast blanket here with my cereal and some juice and some fruits and a cup of tea. Breakfast is one of my favourite meals of the day. I wonder if you like breakfast too. I love cereal, although not the cereal that makes your milk go brown. Ugh. But I imagine some of you do. If you could have your favourite breakfast, I wonder what it would be. Well, my breakfast blanket is a special one today because on it there are five things that tell us stories about Jesus. Stories about what Jesus did after he'd risen from the dead. Remember, we were thinking about that last week, weren't we? That Jesus died on a cross and then three days later he rose again. Well, there are five things on my breakfast blanket that tell us five stories about things that happened after Jesus had risen from the dead. I wonder if you can spot all five. Two of them are a little bit tricky, but see if you can spot them all. I'm going to freeze so that you can have a look, but I'm not sure how long I can stay frozen for. So if you could pause the video too, that would really help. Just start it again when you finish looking. You might want to get something to write on and something to write with while you've paused the video. Ready? Well, how did you do? Did you spot all five? Shall we see what they were? Did you spot some gardening gloves? Do you know who that story is all about? On that very first Easter Sunday, a woman called Mary Magdalene was one of the first people to go to the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid. She was one of the first to see that the tomb was empty. Others joined her, but after a while they went back home. But Mary stayed. She stood outside the tomb crying. She was very sad. A man who was there said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? She thought he was the gardener and she said to him, Did you take him away, sir? Tell me where you put him and I will get him. Then the man said, Mary. And as soon as she heard her name, she knew that it wasn't the gardener. But Jesus. She turned to him and cried out, Teacher. Then she went to find Jesus' friends and filled with joy told them, I have seen the Lord. Why don't you pause the video and talk about how Mary felt before she saw Jesus and how she felt after she saw Jesus? You could maybe write or draw something to remind you of the things that you've talked about. Oh, well, what did you think? Mary was sad, wasn't she? But then she saw Jesus risen and alive and she was filled with joy. And she told people, I have seen the Lord. What about another clue? Did you spot some keys? Do you know who that story is about? On the evening of that same day, Jesus' friends were together in a room in Jerusalem. They had locked the door because they were afraid. They were afraid of the people on the outside, the Jews. They were afraid because the one they had followed for three years had been killed and now his body had disappeared and they didn't really know what had happened. Perhaps they were afraid that they were going to be accused of taking Jesus' body away 
to make it look like he had risen from the dead. Then Jesus came into the room and stood next to them. He didn't unlock the door, he just came in. He said to them, peace be with you. He showed them his hands and his side, the marks that were made by the nails that held him to the cross and the spear that had been driven into his side. He showed them so that they would know that it really was him. Then Jesus' friends were filled with joy. Why don't you pause the video again and talk about how Jesus' friends felt before they saw Jesus and how they felt after they saw Jesus. Again, maybe you could write or draw something to remind you of the things that you've talked about. Hmm. What did you think? They were afraid, weren't they? Then they saw that Jesus had risen and was alive and they were filled with joy. Okay, what about our next one? Did you spot a question mark? Do you know who that story is about? When Jesus came and stood with his friends on that evening, there was one person who wasn't there, a man called Thomas. When all of the others said to him, we have seen the Lord, Thomas said, nope, nope, I don't believe you and I won't believe it until I see the nail marks and put my finger on them and put my hand into his side. I will not believe it. One week later, Jesus' friends were in the house again, and this time Thomas was with them. Jesus came and stood with them, even though the doors were locked. Again he said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Then Thomas said, my Lord and my God. He believed that it really was Jesus and he really was alive. Can you pause the video and talk about how Thomas felt before he saw Jesus? and how he felt after he saw Jesus. Write or draw something if you'd like to. Mm. What did you think? Thomas doubted, didn't he? He wasn't sure. Then he saw that Jesus really had risen and really was alive and he believed. Uh, what about our next one? Did you spot the fish? Do you know who that story is about? Jesus' friends didn't stay in Jerusalem. They went back to a place called Galilee. One night they went out on the Sea of Galilee to catch some fish, but they didn't catch anything. Early in the morning, a man stood on the beach and he called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He told them to throw their net on the right side of the boat. And when they did, they caught so many fish that the net was too heavy to pull back in. In fact, there were 153 fish. As soon as that happened, Peter knew that the man on the beach was Jesus and he shouted, it is the Lord, and jumped into the water. The others followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. When they landed, they saw a fire with some fish cooking on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. 
Jesus took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. Then Jesus talked to Peter. Just a few weeks ago, when Jesus had been arrested, Peter told people three times that he didn't know Jesus, even though he'd spent three years following him and living with him. Jesus spoke to Peter on the beach and asked him three times, do you love me? Jesus gave Peter the chance to say that he really did know Jesus and he really did love him. Then Jesus said to Peter, follow me, just like he had when he first met Peter. Okay, you pause the video again and think about how Peter might have felt after he said three times that he didn't know Jesus and how he felt now that Jesus was inviting him to follow him again. Again, you could write or draw something to remind you about what you've talked about. What did you think? I think Peter would have felt sad and ashamed that he had said that he didn't know who Jesus was. Maybe he didn't know what Jesus was really thinking about him. But now, now he felt forgiven and accepted. Jesus had called him to follow him again and he'd given him a job to do. Well, you can read all of those stories for yourself in John chapter 20, verse 10 to chapter 21, verse 19. But we've got one last one. Did you spot the 500? Do you know what that's about? The man called Paul, we were talking about him last Sunday. He was the one who said he was sure that nothing could separate us from the love God has for us because he knew Jesus had risen from the dead. Well, that man, Paul, tells us that Jesus once appeared to 500 people at the same time. He also tells us that Jesus appeared to some other people too, including Paul himself. Maybe we'll hear more about that another day. Okay, that one was a little bit sneaky, wasn't it? So, anyway, those were our five things and our five stories. We've heard about some of the people who saw Jesus after he rose from the dead. And we've thought about how seeing Je Jesus risen and alive made a difference to them. But here's our last question for this morning. Why? Why did Jesus appear to all of these people after he rose from the dead? Was it just for them? to help them so that they wouldn't feel sad or afraid or doubt. What do you think? Why do you think Jesus appeared to all of these people and more? Pause the video one last time and have a think about that question. Jesus didn't have to appear to all of those people. He told everyone that it was what was going to happen, that he would be killed and three days later he would rise from the dead. They could have trusted what he said and known from the empty tomb that that was what had happened. I think he did it because he wanted them to be sure. He wanted them to be sure so that they would be his witnesses. It wasn't just for them. He had a job that he wanted them to do. He wanted them to be so sure it was true that they would tell others that he really did die and now he really is alive again. That he really did do what he said he was going to do. And that's exactly what they did. 
They told others and they wrote down what they had seen and heard so that we can read about it and know that it is true too. John, one of the witnesses who was in that room in Jerusalem and on the beach eating fish for breakfast cooked by Jesus, says that's exactly why he wrote everything down. So that you and I, in fact, anyone who has or will read his book might know who Jesus is and might believe too. And when we believe, we become one of those witnesses too. But we'll think about that more another day. Wow, that was a lot this morning, wasn't it? Shall we pray? And then if you'd like to, you can sing along with our song, Jesus is the King. Let's pray. Father, thank you that Jesus really did rise from the dead, just like he said he would. Thank you that he met with lots of different people in the different places to show them that he really was alive. Thank you that they saw and believed and told others what had happened. Thank you that they wrote down what they had seen and heard so that we might believe too. Help us by your Holy Spirit to believe what the witnesses tell us and to put our trust in you. Amen. Jesus